how's it going? All right, today we're going to try to finish a painting. When's the painting finished? It's like one of the old art questions. And no, I don't have the answer. I kind of just go with my gut on this. But um, it's been something I've been thinking about a lot more in the last few years than I did previously. Um, I've gotten a little less neurotic about it. I've tried to allow myself to just let the painting be finished, you know, and um, kind of push my insecurities to the side. But it's hard, you know, and um, so whatever, we're going to tackle this subject today. I did this painting uh, a few days ago, last week maybe. I think parts of this are still wet. There's a uh, time lapse I did on my Instagram account that I think we can just put it in here. Can we just put the time lapse in here so you can see how I made the painting? It, there, there's not a whole lot to it. <laughs> And so after I was done with the initial sort of block in and laying the painting in, because it's so simple in, in like design and concept and there's not a lot of stuff here to paint, I, uh, I felt like I was pretty close to finish, if not finished, so much so that I already signed it. A little signature here on the bottom. But um, instead of keep going, working, I just signed it. I said what I thought I wanted to say. It felt good, so I let, let it stop. Anyways. So what I do now is I take the painting and I'll go and I'll put it in front of the fireplace in the living room right under the television. So at night when I'm done for the day, I'm sitting down and watching TV with the kids, whatever. I can, I'm looking at the painting. And um, I've had this, like I said, a few days up to a week by now. And after looking at it for a while and talking about it with my wife and the kids and stuff, um, I, I, I don't like this part. It's close, but it, I, I think I can push it a little further. This little area might be okay. I might touch it a little bit, but this felt a little flat and a little dark. And I wanted to add just a little layer of a uh, little, little bit more to it, right? So I'm gonna take a lighter value of the colors that are already present, come in with some details, and hopefully get out of there without screwing it up, right? Because once I start saying details, I start thinking, you know, fine point, little brush, and I'm gonna make this like, I don't wanna make like crispy grasses and try to over render things, right? This is like a poetic kind of painting. It's, um, you know, these things are like hit or miss. I feel like I'm closer to hit than miss here, but um, I, I, it's not about, ooh, look at it. it, looks the grass looks so real or something like that, right? We're, we're just sharing an emotion and experience here. It, um, the solitude is sort of the emphasis, uh, one with nature, that kind of concept. Um, our, we can take these things much further and I don't wanna try to get all philosophical about the picture I made. But um, maybe we should, right? And maybe that's another video. But for here, so after staring at this painting for a few days, my plan now, um, like I laid out, we're gonna come in and touch this area a little bit over here. I am happy with the way the sky is working, the moon and the direct reflection and the calm water. That's all I'm really gonna say about it at this point. Might as well grab out some, <laughs> grab out. Might as well grab some paints and just get to work, okay? All right, before we get going with the painting, I want to show you what colors I'll be using. It's just a few colors. Yes, these are like uh, cheater greens. I, I really enjoy these greens lately. I'm just going to go with these. This is cedar from Vasari, jasper from Vasari. I got a yellow, no, French yellow ochre from Michael Holland. Michael Holland. I don't know who Michael Holland is. Michael Harding. And... Vasari's Brilliant Yellow Extra Pale instead of white for today, no big deal. I don't even know if I'll use this very much. It's just to lighten things up if we get a little too dark. Um, for brushes, I've got a uh, 
size two treckle spectrum long flat this brush has seen better days and i think this will suit me just fine for the grasses i've also got a larger version this is a size four but it's got a nicer edge so if we need to get a little more specific with some of our grasses we can go with this or the knife and for a medium i'm using gamblin's neo mcgelp i'm told uh Gamblin said that they're not going to make, I think they're changing this to something else. We'll talk about it later. Same product, but with a different name. I can't remember it right now. It's no longer going to be in this bottle, which I think is going to be a, a good thing. When I get the new tube, it's supposed to come in a tube form and the name of it. I'll, I'll, do, a, I'll do a little video about that. But um, these are the colors I'll be using. Like I said, we're going to try to keep it simple. Let's get to the canvas. So here's my sort of uh, project for the day. I've got this area, like I said earlier, I feel like it's a little too flat. I feel like the rest of the painting's fine. Maybe I could do a little something under this thing, but you know, there's, I could, you, we can always go farther, right? And I mean, I could get rid of all these little uh, seemingly imperfections, but I think it adds to the looseness of the whole painting. And like I said, I don't want to get all tight and cringy on this thing. I don't know if cringy is the right word. Maybe it's crispy or something. So I, I'm mixing just the two greens I got together. Again, we've got cedar and jasper um, from Vasari on my uh, used treckle brush here. As a landscape painter, we like our, our busted up uh, brushes, right? So I'm going to look for the areas where it's a bit dark, and I'm just going to try to lighten it up just, just a touch. This is going to add another layer to this whole area too. You know, and sometimes it just feels a little more finished when it's got a little more paint on it. Plus one of the problems I struggle with because I have a, I'm, I'm working in a, I've got too much light right now on my, on my canvas. I, uh, I'm still working with setting things up here in my garage slash studio. But, uh, so what that does though is because I have so much light on the canvas, it appears brighter than it really is in real life. So like when I took the painting back into the house and I just had it setting under the fireplace, it was um, it was considerably darker. So that was, that was another reason why I wanted to come and just sort of lighten this up. All right, so this color seems to be working okay. I'm just gonna poke it around a little bit, see how I feel about it before I commit. Um, but I'm okay with this. Now, I don't want to go all the way down through here. You know, it's like, uh, it makes sense that it's a little darker where the water's going, the grass is going into the water and the reflection begins. I don't want to be too specific here. We're just sort of alluding to a lot of this stuff. So, just trying to keep it loose. I don't want to make this. So like one of the things like I, I get nuts about is um, the spaces between. I don't want the spaces in between each clump of grasses to be the same or equidistant because that would sort of flatten things out. So when we're doing something like this, I, I like I said, there's not a lot here. So what we're working with is very important. So uh, you just want to make sure that they're not the same distances. Our, our brains always sort of want to you know, like compartmentalize everything, but um, try to keep it a little messy so it feels a little more organic. Let me give it just a little bit down here. This is almost like a line, so we'll give it the finger, not the bad finger, just any finger. Again, don't want to be too uniform in the way we're applying the brush strokes, right? If everything's the same, everything's going to get boring. Push to the left, push to the right. Leave some of that dark coming through in between. Work with what we've already got here. We're not looking to make any big changes. We just want to sort of enhance what's already present. I'm already a bit happier with this. 
which is good because I didn't want to screw it up. get a couple uh, little more specific reflections in here if you want just the air and the hair on the brush I'm holding it from the back nice and light touch and I'm just dropping those grasses down into the water now it's starting to feel like we should run away from this thing before we screw it up I am going to add some of that color over here. It just makes sense to do that. So these guys relate. And while we're here, we might as well get a little more detail, but see like I'm adding more detail, but I'm not really, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in here trying to really draw specific grasses. I'm still trying to keep it loose. So it kind of feels in line with the rest of the, what's already on here. Get this thing. I was listening to um, some music podcast or something the other day. No, it was just this morning. That's why it's fresh in my head. Um, I forget what song it was. Is it the guy was talking about making a, re a recording on a David Bowie album and they were looking for a specific sound on the guitar. It didn't sound the way they wanted, you know, but uh, so they start playing around with the amplifiers and the acoustics of the room. And, you know, I, the guy turns something on that he shouldn't have turned on and then boom, that ends up being the sound everybody loves. Like, so I just think like when we're painting, if especially when we're trying to finish something, we can't always predict what the ending's gonna look like, right? We have to be open to those happy accidents and um, be receptive when like it works, you know, and just, and just go with it. So my goal here isn't to try to correct, quote unquote, all my mistakes or things that could be a little bit more polished, but to just sort of enhance the areas around them, leave some of that organic looseness and hopefully get out of here without killing the message. Now I didn't do a whole lot here. And I'm just going to take a minute and think before I really say we're, we're finished. Um, but, but yeah, this is pretty much all I wanted to do. I'm going to try going a little lighter and now's when uh, someone needs to take the brush away from me, but nobody's here to do so. But I'm going to do this anyways, and I'm just going to add a slightly lighter value as well. So we're going to add like two values on top of this, which will give us three values, you know, for the clump of grasses. I, three is a magic number, right? Whatever. Areas. See some of these areas that are a bit dark, especially it's a little distracting, right? When we've got a dark next to a light. So let's have a lighter value up here, segueing from the water down into the grass. I think we'll be good. Sorry, I got all quiet. You know, I gotta think. I think uh, I think we should walk away. As I keep painting. Okay, for real, I'm gonna walk away. I think that reads a little better, right? It's just not as flat, which was the goal. Okay, so I've got, I'm still trying to figure out how to add a little more detail here in the grasses. I've 
Got a Spectrum 3050 size four script brush. It's seen a bit better days. The point isn't as uh, fine as it should be. I'm gonna come in here with another lighter version of the green. I've been lightening the green up slowly using some of that ochre and a little bit of Juan Brilliant, which is a, a nice Williamsburg color. It's kind of like a Caucasian flesh tone looking thing. I don't know. It, it mixes up well with a lot of stuff instead of going to white. Juwan Brilliant. Give it a shot. I like it better than uh, Naples Yellow. It's kind of a substitute for that on my palette. Now, I don't know how close you can see what I'm doing here, so I'm going to move in a little bit. Bear with me. There we go. All right, and I'm just adding stuff up on the top. Just another layer. I think of this stuff as like... You know, there's not a lot going on in this painting. I've said that a bunch of times now. But the stuff that is here, I feel like it needs to be substantive. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but you know, like it, it has to have substance. Otherwise, the whole thing's just too loose, right? Too, too empty. I don't want it that sparse. And anytime you're adding little details, I think it's like a little, uh, it's a little treat for the viewer, right? So somebody enters the gallery or the room or whatever, and they see a painting across the way, and if it's good enough to sort of draw them in, well, then give them a little reward for getting up close and personal, right? So give them some little stuff to look at, little details, little ways you apply the paint, change things up a little bit. Oh, there we go. I like that. The hairs on the brush are actually kind of splitting in a very fortunate way. So I'm going to just go with that. We can have some of this stuff happening lightly in the reflection as well. Let's add a nice little... Uh, I want to separate this clump from the clump behind it, so just give it a little more oomph. I don't want to get too low down in here. Hit that. I'm thinking about titles as I, uh, I don't know, I, I'm using like a sort of a fallen moon kind of a theme with this sort of work. I like that idea for a title, but. We'll land, we'll land somewhere that's sort of similar to that, I would imagine. All right, we may have gotten to the point in the video where I should stop and walk away, but yet here I am again, wanting to fuss over a dot. I can't tell you how much of my life I've spent fussing over dots in paintings. This dot happens to be the moon. Now, there's some stuff around here, which I like. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so I don't necessarily mind this, but it has sort of like an unfinished feeling to it. And I don't know if it's awesome to leave it like that or if I should touch it. So I'm going to touch it. It's dry. So I'm pretty confident that whatever I can do here is not going to screw it up too, too bad. I'm going to grab just, we're just going to mess with it a little bit. I've got a little bit of titanium white and Vasari Brilliant Yellow Extra Pale. Right? And I'm just going to take these two colors. I'm going to have barely any paint on my brush and we're going to do like a sort of scumble job here. Okay, so there's the paint on the brush. I've got just the white and a little bit of titanium. No, whatever that. I've got just, I've got my brush. There's not a ton of paint on my brush. I've got titanium white, brilliant yellow, extra pale. I'm going to even like wipe off some of the paint here, it's just very thin. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to sort of halo this sucker out. Just 
what I'm thinking is that I can create kind of like an aura around it, like give it a little bit of glow. That's more than I want. So we'll wipe it down. Um, I think we're at the point where uh, this is unnecessary. I've got some of this lilac, no, orchid. It's orchid. It's, I don't know, it's kind of close. I'm gonna spit some of that out and see if I can sort of work it in a little bit. Using the same brush with the white and the yellow on it, right? It's that, uh, the yellow is just that brilliant yellow, extra pale. We'll come around here. I'm just trying to get some of the scratchy quality from that initial layer. And I just, I don't want it to feel like a scratch. I want it to feel like, a, like I said, like an aura. Put just a little bit of Juan Brilliant on my brush, which is a bit darker in value than the um, Brilliant Yellow. The Brilliant Yellow is reading almost like white, so uh, the Juan Brilliant's a little, it's a little softer. It's kind of doing what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go with this, you know. I think, yeah, that this is more what I wanted to have happen. Okay, so never mind all the uh, extra yellow pale, Juan Brilliant with some of that extra yellow, titanium white. Orchid worked out as having a nice base to work into without having to try to remix, you know, the colors around it. Might as well work. Uh, Work some of this in, just soften that up a little bit. So it um so it doesn't stick out quite so much. Get a little brighter while we're here. Okay. All right, that'll wrap it up. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, hope you got something out of this. Finishing a painting's hard. Don't be too hard on yourself in the process. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. It helps me be able to do more of these things, which I'm looking forward to doing. So, uh, well, thanks again. Bye now.